All I want is a little support around here. Is that too much to ask for? You're not listening. This is not my job. It's yours. Oh, you're impossible. Oh! We've all seen this happen. Two or more people disagreeing, arguing, fighting. There's one word which sums it all up. Conflict. It can be an obstacle to doing our jobs. It can make our work environment feel uncomfortable, even hostile. And if it goes unresolved, it can lead to more serious problems, such as harassment and violence. However, if it is handled properly, conflict can actually be a good thing. It can bring forth new ideas, new perspectives, and new ways to get our jobs done. Conflict resolution can be a powerful force for positive change. Watch and see. I'm extremely disappointed in you. You are not a performer. I asked you to come to me directly with any questions or problems. Whoa, wait a minute. Communication is what we need in this office. Wait a minute. I didn't have any questions. Conflict. Where does it come from? There are a number of different sources of conflict, but they all have one thing in common. Conflict is about differences. Differing expectations about job roles or instructions can be a source of conflict. Disagreements about who's responsible for what and what's the proper procedure seem to occur all too often. Differences in treatment, even if they are only perceived, can lead to arguments over status or resources. Who is more important and who gets first dibs on equipment or materials are often questions that aren't resolved easily. People with differing goals, values, or priorities can often find themselves in conflict with one another. Other conflicts arise from deeply embedded differences in habits, feelings, or beliefs. Even old conflicts that everyone thought had been resolved can come back to haunt us. Many times, holding a grudge about past disagreements can cause and complicate new conflicts. Kind of rude, I think. Don't worry about it. However, there is almost always some way that a conflict can be resolved. Understanding each type of conflict can help us find ways to deal with them. Let's take a closer look. Well, Sarah, the requisition you filled out was incorrect. No, it's not. That's exactly who One common category of conflict is misunderstandings. For instance, Confusion over incorrect, outdated, or vague information or instructions can lead to conflict. When people develop different understandings of the same situation, the best response is to provide everyone with the most reliable, accurate, and current information available. This helps establish common ground. But even with the most up-to-date facts and figures, people can still disagree about what they really mean which brings us to another common type of conflict. No, 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 you're wrong. That's not what this data means at all. In these cases, engaging in friendly debate over the disagreement can often lead to a resolution. Sometimes it may be necessary to agree to disagree and to move on. Other times, people can agree on a common goal but still disagree on how to get there. These procedural conflicts are about different means to the same end. Uh, they can take it and then do what they need to do with it. So. Well, from there, you're not entering anybody's name in the computer. You're doing it wrong. When there is more than one way to complete a task, a compromise that incorporates parts of each plan can often be reached. Conflicts can be far more difficult to resolve if the individuals or groups have different goals. This can sometimes feel like a no-win situation. I got some deliveries to make. Well, you can't use the van. I needed to make a pickup. However, these situations can often be turned into win-win scenarios through collaboration. Few goals are truly mutually exclusive. By working together to reach both goals, conflicting parties can often resolve their differences. 
Over the years, conflict has gotten a bad rap. It can actually be quite valuable. If handled properly, conflict can be a source of innovation and positive change. How we resolve conflict is the key. Close, but... Hmm. Okay. There isn't one surefire conflict resolution strategy that will work in every situation. Actually, there are several different approaches, each with its own pluses and minuses. Which one we should use depends on the specifics of the situation at hand. One strategy some people use is to compete with the other party, fighting for the outcome they want. Although this approach is very assertive, it shows little concern for others. If you win, you will get what you want, but the losers will be unhappy and may hold a grudge which could contribute to future conflict. If the other party chooses to compete as well, they could end up winning and you'd have nothing to show for your efforts. If the situation ends up in a tie, everyone loses because no one achieves their goal. Another approach to conflict resolution is to yield and let the other person get their way. Your needs definitely won't get satisfied this way. However, if you feel threatened by the conflict or just have more important things to do, yielding can have its advantages. If you're going to make a big deal about this, have it your way. I don't have time to argue. The major drawback to yielding is that you may regret it later. You can end up feeling bitter or angry for giving up what you wanted. An approach that is similar to yielding is simply to avoid the conflict. Looking the other way, refusing to talk about it, or passing the buck to someone else can reduce your frustration and free you up to deal with other things. But avoiding conflict is no substitute for resolving it once and for all. The strategies of avoiding yielding and competing all fall short of bringing lasting resolution to conflict. As long as someone's needs or concerns go unfulfilled or unaddressed, conflict can still exist. There are two other approaches to resolving conflict which can have more lasting results. Compromise makes sure that everyone who is involved gets at least some of what they want. When each party gives a little to get a little, they can often meet halfway to resolve a conflict. Compromising is about weighing priorities. Each party must decide what they are willing to trade and what they are not willing to give up under any circumstances. Most people are willing to budge on some issues. You then need to work together to find common ground, the things you agree on. Start there and negotiate trading your lesser priorities for higher ones. Eventually, you'll reach a compromise. That can't be right. When two or more parties agree on a compromise, each sees at least some of their needs being met. This can often bring long-term resolution to a conflict. However, compromise doesn't always completely satisfy all parties. Sometimes people have second thoughts about the things they gave up in the negotiations. The conflict could erupt again, or other problems might develop as a result of hard feelings. While compromise may be the only solution to conflicts over mutually exclusive goals, few situations actually fall into that category. Many different goals can be reached simultaneously if people work together or collaborate. To collaborate, you should be assertive about satisfying your concerns, but you must also cooperate to see that other people's needs are being fulfilled at the same time. Start by defining the problem as mutual, something that belongs to everyone involved. Then look for a solution which satisfies everyone's needs. Collaboration is one of the few approaches that can resolve a conflict once and for all. When you collaborate, everyone sees their needs met and their goals reached. Although this may take some time and energy, it is usually worth the effort. 
Although these conflict resolution strategies may make resolving conflict look easy, there can be complications. If a conflict grows too quickly or becomes too intense, it can lead to a confrontation. These situations require special consideration. I'm supposed to add up. Do not add up to three. They add up to two, and I've been doing it for 15 minutes. Are you doing page three and page five? If a conflict boils over into a confrontation, people may feel like their entire reputation or self-worth is on the line. These situations can be time bombs just waiting to explode. That's why it is important to know how to diffuse confrontations. When we are confronted, our reflex is often either to fight back or to run away. But neither attacking nor retreating will help to diffuse the confrontation or resolve the conflict behind it. It is important to resist these urges and try to work through our differences. First, let's take a look at the best type of verbal response we can make to a confrontation. How you say something is often more important than what you say. Shouting is not a productive form of communication. Stay calm and encourage the other party to talk about their concerns. Tell them you want to understand and ask them to explain their point of view. Don't interrupt. Let them finish, then show that you do understand by restating their position in your own words. Don't disagree or be judgmental. When it's your turn to talk, use the word I instead of the word you whenever possible. I takes ownership of the situation and can promote cooperation and understanding. You can make your statement sound like accusations and may put the other person on the defensive. But there is more to diffusing a confrontation than just talking a certain way. Your physical response also plays an important role. Knowing how to react physically can prevent further escalation and help diffuse the situation. Remember to stay calm. Keep your arms low in a non-threatening position. Don't cross your arms, make fists, or fidget. Try to stay at least five feet away from the other person and avoid physical contact. Touching someone who is upset may upset them further possibly escalating the confrontation to violence. Make sure not to make them feel threatened or backed into a corner. Don't allow the person you are dealing with to touch you either. They may try to grab or hit you if they are really upset. If they push you, don't push back. It could escalate the confrontation. Instead, just walk away. If the other person grabs you, Try to break free and get away from them. If you have to, call out for help. Someone is usually nearby. Whatever you do, don't allow yourself to get drawn into a fight. Fights lead to all kinds of trouble. You could be injured, face disciplinary action from your employer, or be arrested for assault. You could even be sued by the other person no matter who started it. If you don't take steps to resolve conflict or diffuse a confrontation, there can be serious consequences. The first consequence is obvious. Conflict causes stress. Stress leads to frustration. Frustration leads to anger. Anger causes short tempers. It all adds up to more conflict. Another problem is that after prolonged periods of conflict, your patience may wear thin. You may no longer trust the other party. Communication may stop completely. This can lead to a stalemate where no further progress can be made. But escalation is probably the most serious consequence of unresolved conflict. As we have seen, prolonged conflict can sometimes lead to a confrontation. The nature of the conflict can change and become about placing blame or getting even. When the goal turns to hurting others, 
there can be very serious results. The situation can escalate to harassment, threats, and even violence. None of us are strangers to conflict, at work or at home. It can be unpleasant, disruptive, even scary. But because of its potential consequences, we can't allow conflict to continue unchecked for very long. Let's review what you can do to help resolve conflicts. First, know how to recognize the common sources of conflict. Compromise when goals are mutually exclusive. Look for ways to collaborate so everyone can reach their goals together. Diffuse confrontations with a calm verbal response and a non-threatening physical response. And work to resolve conflict before it can escalate into something more serious. Remember, in spite of its potential problems, conflict can produce new ideas, innovation, and positive change. The key is how it's handled. When conflict is resolved properly, Everybody wins.